the global currency war kicking it up a notch. We have a couple of more central bankers. Uh, the Polish central bank uh, reduced interest rates to a all-time record low in Poland, dropped a quarter of a point to 3%. That's a record low. I don't know how many uh, polls does it take to reduce interest rates. I'm not really sure exactly how many uh, board members there, but apparently they've got enough. Uh, they lowered them down to 3%. South Korea also uh, reduced interest rates. I guess that's a record low over there. Bank of Korea down to two and a half percent. You know, all these central bankers are cutting their interest rates, whether their economies need the rate cuts or not. Right. Australia cut this week. I talked about that already. They reduced interest rates to an all time record low in Australia. Interest rates in Australia are lower than they were at the depths of the 2008 financial crisis, 2009. So their rates are even lower. But the jobs data came out overnight from both Australia and New Zealand. And Australia reported that their April jobs numbers, they created 50,100 jobs, 50,100 jobs. There's only 24 million people in Australia. So if you want to relate that to the United States, we would have to create 650,000 jobs uh, to be on pace uh, with what Australia did. We only created 165,000. So our 165,000, you know, pales in comparison uh, to Australia's 650. Our markets got excited about 650, but apparently uh, the bankers in Australia, uh, they think that that's still too weak. Uh, they have to have interest rates at record lows. In fact, I'm reading in this article on Bloomberg that a, a uh, I don't know, I guess uh, one of the, a broker from Commonwealth Bank or banker said that uh, the reserve board members must have winced when they saw those numbers. I mean, why? they're upset. They don't want all this job creation because they want low interest rates. Now, New Zealand also, you know, New Zealand came out, they intervened. They sold their currency to weaken it. They've also got interest rates at a record low. New Zealand announced a quarterly. They, they report their jobs numbers quarterly in New Zealand, not monthly. And so they had a record quarter this last quarter, 38,000 jobs created. Now, put this in perspective, there's only four and a half million people living in New Zealand. So that's about 170th of the U.S. population. So for us to create 38,000 or them creating 38,000 jobs in a quarter is like us creating 900,000 jobs a month for three consecutive months, 900,000 jobs. So the New Zealand economy is on fire compared to the U.S. economy, yet interest rates are at a record low. Why? Now, the bankers will say, well, they need low interest rates to keep the currency down so that we can have economic growth. But the currencies have been rising. The Australian and New Zealand dollars are among the strongest in the world, and they have the, among the strongest economies in the world. They have the lowest unemployment rates or among the lowest unemployment rates in the world. So how can a strong currency be bad? You know, the Japanese are blaming their problems on a strong yen. Well, the Australian dollar has been much stronger than the yen over the past, let's say, five years or so. Uh, the Australian dollar has doubled against the dollar. Um, but So why, are, why isn't Australia or why isn't New Zealand having the same problems as Japan? Because if it was the currency's fault, then they should be having a problem. The fact of the matter is, it's not the currency's fault. In fact, I think that as good as these numbers are in Australia and New Zealand, they would be better if their currencies were even stronger. But the central banks don't want that. You know, remember, we had a strong dollar policy in the United States. Of course, the whole policy was just saying that we had a strong dollar policy and a strong dollar was in our national interest. That was the entirety of the policy. Of course, everything we did was undermining the policy. That's when I wrote my book, uh, The Crash Proof, my first book. And I called the um, our strong dollar policy it was like the Loch Ness Monster. You know, people talk about it, but no one ever sees it. And. I, 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 my analogy was to a, a student who claimed to have a straight A policy, right? He said he had a straight A policy, but he cut class and he smoked dope and he didn't study. And it didn't matter what his policy was. He wasn't going to get straight A's with those study habits. And so we had a strong dollar policy, but we had a weak dollar. But why is it 
that the only country uh, in which a strong currency is in the national interest is America. Why isn't a strong Australian dollar in the interest of Australia? Why isn't a strong yen in the interest of Japan? Well, the answer is it is. Uh, but the politicians and the bankers just don't understand that. So now you have these central bankers in Australia and New Zealand where they have good economies cutting interest rates anyway because they want to be like everybody else. I mean, maybe all these central bankers, when they get together at conferences, maybe there's a lot of peer pressure, you know, to cut rates. Maybe all the cool bankers, you know, the ones from the United States and Great Britain and Japan, they're over there, you know, they got all the hot chicks around them and they're cool and they're, you know, they're, they're drinking martinis and having a great old time and they're trying to coax uh, these other central bankers over. Hey, what's wrong? You know, you got to try this stuff. You got to try some of this QE. It's great. It feels great. It's a great time, man. What's your problem? You don't want some of this stuff? What are you afraid? You're afraid of, your, you're afraid of what? Uh, you're afraid of inflation? Don't worry about inflation. We got that covered. Just change the CPI. You got some kind of mandate? You know, what are you, some kind of mama's boy? You a sissy? You chicken? Don't you want to have a good time? Right? Is this what these bankers are talking about? So you've got... Uh, Australia, New Zealand, they want to be part of the party. They want to play ball. They want to be team players. They don't want to be left out in the cold with higher interest rates. So they're all doing it. The polls. Get the polls coming in. Get the Koreans in on it. Everybody. It's a big party, man. Yeah, it's just like drugs. You know, when you're a drug addict, you want your friends to be high, too. You don't want your friends criticizing what you're doing, right? You want everybody doing the same thing, right? And so I guess these central bankers are no different than little kids, and they're very subjected to peer pressure. So despite overwhelming evidence that weakening your currency doesn't work, they do it anyway. And you can look at countries where the currencies are strong and the economies are getting better, and nobody wants to think for a minute, maybe a strong currency is a good thing. Maybe we shouldn't be trying to weaken our currency. Maybe we should look at policies that strengthen our currency. And, you know, what policies strengthen your currency? You know, limited government spending, balanced budgets, high savings rates, lots of innovation, lots of investment. Aren't these good things? You know, what produces a weak currency? Deficits, uh, lots of spending, big government, lots of money printing, you know, weak economic growth. That's what that's what gives you a weak currency. So what do you think? What do you think is more desirable? And of course, what's easier to achieve in order to achieve a strong currency? Right. That's like getting an A in school. That's hard. You got to study. You got to you know, you got to do your homework. You got to show up. You got to crack the books. The reward is an A. Is it hard to get an F? No, anybody can get an F. It's easy. The easiest thing you can do is get an F. That's why it's the worst grade. Right. The, the highest grade is the hardest to get. And the worst gear is the easiest. So the easiest thing to have is a weak currency. You just print a bunch of currency. You know, you just create inflation. You're going to have a weak currency. You know, anybody can achieve that. So why is that the goal? Why is that desirable? You have to be hung. You have to be on drugs to think that, which is what all these central bankers are on. 855-4-SHIFT. Uh, that's our phone number. We'll take some calls. we got a quick break. We'll be right back. The Peter Schiff Show. 